All right, so already in episode two, we're starting to experience the moral dilemma that is a big part of Devil Survivor 2, the game. And I can't wait to talk more about that. Not even in just this review, but, you know, as the episodes go on. And I'm curious to see where everybody else will stand and what their position would be had they, you know, played the game. And it's just very interesting watching this anime because I feel like I'm watching somebody else's playthrough and the choices that they make and coming to their own conclusions as the anime goes on. is I don't know, that's just kind of what it feels like to me. Based on how things are going just with these two episodes and how they're really portraying the protagonist, I can tell you for sure that you're not going to get Yamato's ending. Because Yamato's ending is all about survival of the fittest and weeding out the weak. And, you know, basically like a milder form of Darwin's Law. And that's just not really what I see this version of the protagonist being. Based on how it's going so far, I predict it's one of these three endings. Either A, Dachi's neutral ending, which has two different variations to depend choices you make in the game. And honestly, I don't like either of them. Because either way, it's just restarting it and you're just doomed for continued failure. Or B, we have the law ending where you side with Ronaldo. I've never done this ending because I don't agree with it. It's basically everybody gets treated equally. Everybody has, you know, equal contribution. And I just never really felt like it was realistic. I felt like it was a lofty goal. Eventually something would happen to upset the balance. Like no one can truly be equal in talents and merit and everything. That's kind of why I kept siding <laughs> with uh, freaking Yamato's merit system. Well, that, and because he's, you know, Yamato, and I can't say no to that face. I mean, can you? Well, actually, most of the fandom, I think, can. They kind of view him as one of the villains of the story. But, I mean, it, it's all in your perspective, okay? The final, and what I think is the most likely ending that I think they will pick, is the Kingmaker ending, where Elcor, or the English one, is placed as the new god, and everything resets, but humans get more free will and their future looks a little bit more hopeful but you know like I said we, we will see. At the start of episode two we get a really good look at JP's you know inside building and I've always liked how it looked in the game and it was really cool to see it animated and all the staircases and the really cool big clock and everything. At this point we get to see Yamato and all his glory finally in the anime and uh, I don't know. I just have issues with his English voice actor a little bit. Like, you know, I'm not going to blame the voice actor. They're doing their job with the direction they're given. But the OG English voice actor, KG Tang, did such a better job, in my opinion, emoting and having that pompous attitude, and yet still kind of made you want to like him. Whereas the voice actor who does it in the anime I just I know I haven't heard very much of him yet but what little I've heard I don't know I just I'm not that impressed then again I'm also really picky when it comes to these sorts of things and I didn't even like the voice actor for Hibiki the protagonist so I don't know again he he's not bad I just would have picked somebody with a little bit of a softer I don't know more apathetic voice. Daichi and Io are locked in a room and they're unable to like really figure out what's going on at the start because let's be real to Yamato they're noobs and they're not worth his time. I mean they didn't summon the great tiger Pokemon thing. <laughs> I reiterate Io's only powerful thing about her is her big boobs which have their own gravitational pull they are huge you can't help but look at them how does she have no back pain how does she run it must be painful Hibiki meanwhile ends up finding out some serious stuff that's going on in Gyps freaking end of the world information and he doesn't know how to process this he's like why doesn't 
anybody else know about this? Why aren't you warning people? Which, I mean, why would you do that? Do you want mass panic? Like, this is how you create mass panic. Th this is a terrible idea. Meanwhile, Yamato is just praising him a little bit here about his talents. Like, yeah, you summon this powerful beast, you know. It's so cool, basically, you know. He's, he's impressed, but he's only shown in the way he can. And Hibiki, I guess, is going to be one of those type of protagonists. Where, like, I didn't ask for this power. It just suddenly came. Makoto also explains that, you know... The apps on the phone, this death face thing, is what's causing all these demons to come to, you know, the world and Japan and everything. And they're summoning them. And they don't know who, you know, put this app out for everybody to use, but it's causing problems. I mean, I know who put the app up because I played the game. But you don't know if you're just watching the anime. Much to Yamato's displeasure... Things aren't quite going his way, though, and this Hibiki, not my Hibiki, this Hibiki, isn't really quite willing to work with him yet, which is an insult because he's Yamito. How freaking dare you, Hibiki? How dare you turn down what should be your man? Well, I hope their friendship will grow in the anime like it can potentially in the, you know, game. I don't think it will get as close as I want it to be because like again I think they're gonna continue to be at odds. It was really funny to see them try to explain the demon auction which is a feature in the game and how you can get new monsters on your team through points that you earn through battles and stuff and it was just for like oh this is such a powerful thing you never know what you're gonna summon and stuff and it's like you really do I mean you you bid for what you want like you just don't always get it because the auction system is kind of annoying we get another mysterious anguished one moment and wow can we just take a moment to look at his thick white eyelashes like wow they are distracting Io ends up waking up and sees that Hibiki is there and you know She's, like, worried about what's going to happen and everything. And he, he freaking hides the truth or downplays it, I guess you could say. Makoto gives them a ride. And Daichi's just really surprised that they're just being allowed to just let go. Like, he keeps asking, like, are you sure, like, wow, we're really just able to just leave? Like, what the heck? And... That's when they find out that Hibiki basically made a deal. You know, he doesn't want them to get hurt, so they're going to get dropped off, and he's going to go help them. And Dachi doesn't like that. Dachi's like, hey, man, no, we're, we're bros. We're in this together. You shouldn't just be handling things on your own just because you're a smart student, you know. Accept some help. They aren't able to get too far, though, because... Travel uh, past a certain way on the bridge is just impossible. And Io, Io, whatever, is just upset. And she starts crying because she's useless. And <laughs> is that this, this whole series just going to be me just ripping on this girl? I don't know. Maybe. I'm sorry if you guys are fans of her. They end up going to this one shelter. And uh, to, they find out they can, like see who survived, who hasn't, rough idea based on, you know, bodies found and all that. And everything is looking pretty desolate in the shelter. Hibiki and Daichi is like, is there anything you and Jip can do to help these people? And Makoto's like, I can't do anything. This isn't my job. We're supposed to focus on our own jobs. We're not firemen. And this is a huge problem in thing that really starts tearing the group apart in the game like who do you help who can't you help do you stretch yourself out too thin do you focus on just saving your groups and even Makoto is just like really torn on this and this Hibiki in particular I feel like just wants to help as many people as he can well Ayo is looking to see if her parents are still alive and everything a monster breaks in and just mass panic ensues of course Hibiki summons Byako and 
tells them to fight the monster outside and away from, you know, the people. Unfortunately, there is a phone outside that is unattended. The dude's dead. And it just keeps summoning more and more of those stupid winged skull faces into the world. Daichi wants to help, but he can't. His phone's not working. I think it's because his monster was preoccupied or still healing or something. I don't I don't. Meanwhile, Hibiki and his tiger thing is trying to fight off a seemingly endless horde of these skull monsters. And Daichi's like, hey, you know, stop trying to do this all yourself. Let me help you. You know, we're bros. You got to stop taking things on by yourself. And Hibiki's like, I was given this power for a purpose and I want to save as many people as I can. And Daichi's like, yeah, that's fine, but let me help you accept the help, even though he can't do squat right now. Just as all seems lost, Makoto comes and saves the day with her main demon. And, you know, she's one of my favorite females, one of them. And I like how they showed, you know, that she's not just somebody who pushed around. Like, she's got this, okay? And she does the one thing that somebody else should have done a long time ago and broke the phone. Because the only way you can stop more demons from coming out into the world is by breaking the phone that's summing them up. With the battle finished, we encounter a new problem and dilemma where everybody is treating Hibiki like some kind of monster who caused all these demons and is controlling them and everything when he saved them. And that's another thing, like, do you bother saving these people if it's going to go unnoticed or if, if you're not going to be appreciated? These are things, you know, that you got to think about. The little boy that he saves at the start of the battle, though, was very thankful and actually, you know, thanks him. He's like, hey, thanks for saving my life. And the little girl that he gave water to earlier is there, too, you know. Like, they're very thankful, and that's when it really clicks for Hibiki, you know, this was all worth it, you know. Because I saved their lives. It's okay if, you know, they don't thank me. Even though, you know, obviously the thanks feels great. Now up to speed on what's going on. Daichi and Io join Hibiki back at Jip. And they all agree that they are going to work together under, you know, Yamato. And they're going to do what they can to save everybody. And Yamato is pleased to have new underlings. Their first mission is to save Fumi. And... They have to go find him and re rescue her, and that's going to be another whole ordeal if the battle is anything like it was in the game. There is an after credit scene that I almost missed between Elcor slash Anguished One and Yamato, and they're both discussing Hibiki, or the Shining One, and what they're going to do and the usefulness of certain people and of course, like maybe I could show, can be useful for this upcoming stuff. And Yamato kind of glanced at him like, mm, I don't know. Right before the episode fully ends, we actually get to see a little bit of Ronaldo, who I'm hoping isn't as insufferable as he was in the game. <laughs> well, what do you guys think of it so far? Has it made you interested in playing the game? Have you played the game? Are you enjoying the show? What's your favorite character? Who would you side with so far, knowing what you know that I've leaked or whatever? Um, what would you do? I don't know. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts down below. Bye.